Okay, welcome to... Welcome to Daniel Month. Why, and, am, I, why uh, am I already winded? <laughs> I don't know. It's, I'm all, it's exhausting. I'm, Daniel Month is exhausting. I'm pre-exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to keep donation days, donation days, but we'll do them a little bit differently like we did last Friday. But Monday through Thursday during Daniel Month yeah. is going to be the history of whiskey as it shows up in the world. Okay. Nice suit jacket. Well, super fancy. I dressed up for Daniel Month. Yeah. Well, one, one must. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? So. I'm pretty sure this is mine. First things first. Does it have someone else's driver's license or something in there? <laughs> it, it was in my office. Oh. oh. It's a toothpick still in a wrapper. Hmm. Classy. Some candy wrappers. Oh. God, get that out of here. That's disgusting. That's it. Okay. So. In world history, the first time that spirit shows up, it's called, well, r roughly, Ushkebeha. Right? So, or Akvavite, roughly, which was shortened to Ushki, which was then anglicized to whiskey, right? Right, but and the first mention of Akvavite, the water of life, is in Irish written history in 1405. There's the uh, the basically uh, local account of spirits okay. where it says the local chieftain died from drinking too much whiskey, <laughs> and that's the first time it shows up. However, this is an Irish spirit called Pachin. This is an Irish spirit? This is an Irish spirit oh. called Pachin. Okay. Now, it's a moonshine, essentially, and for most of Ireland's whiskey history, this was illegal, right? Now, not for the whole history, but it was very common, and it was a household kind of pot still. It's actually, Pachin is, is pot, r roughly speaking, pot. Okay. Pot spirit. Now, there's a chance this predates what we know as single malt, or just whiskey in general. Yeah. Um... However, this is actually made from all malted barley. Okay, so the so when I'm thinking Irish whiskey, I'm thinking sweet. Uh, you know, the you're thinking of barrels. I'm thinking. You're thinking I'm what th I am provide. thinking of the barrel effect. Yes, and I'm thinking of sweet. I'm thinking about the um, well, the, the the sugar cookies, the uh, what's it called? Shortbread cookies. Shortbread cookies. Yeah. Um, but that sweetness comes from the barrel. Yeah. I'm not. There's a lot of character jumping out of the glass that I would not characterize as sweet. Now, to me, this is still, as far as a moonshine type spirit goes, it is still very sweet. Compared to but, Irish, compared to yes. Irish whiskey. No, it's not. Mm -mm. But compared to generic, like, oh, let's have vodka, or let's have any other new make spirit. Oh, yeah. This is sweet in the nose. It's musty, like grain malt musty. See, that's, that's, the, that's the word. It is, so you can usually pick out that malt mustiness mm -hmm. from whis whiskeys, but it's swimming just along with a lot of other things. Not anymore. <laughs> this is just a standalone uh, musty maltiness right in the glass. And there. not only that, if you've ever been around damp harvested alfalfa, oh, like, the hay. like hort, hay, hort, but specifically alfalfa, it has that yeah. sickly sweet kind of smell. No, I got you. Yeah, I like you. wet vegetation that's also slightly sweet. So if I was going into this completely uh, deaf, blind, and dumb, mm -hmm. I didn't know what was going on. I put my nose in there. Not I whiskey. I wouldn't be like, uh, I want to drink this. No, immediately. no, you wouldn't. Right. Now, I will tell you that the nose is foreboding, yeah. but the taste is beautiful. Mm. It's, it's, it, it gets slightly sweet really fast, and then that mustiness goes away really quick. It switches to fruit and honey. Yeah. And then there's a, still a little bit of that alfalfa grassy right. aftertaste. And this like this um, generic grain sugar floating on top of all that. Yeah. This white sugar. Kind of nice, right? Yeah. Now, the, the, the nose is... Nicer than the nose. The nose is a bit of a put off. Right. But the taste is... Is really nice. Mm -hmm. Now this was named after the gentleman, the uh, the Mad March Hare. Uh, and what I liked about this guy is he used he had a little uh, pop up shop that was supposed to be like vegetables and fruit and you know yeah. like a pop up mercantile. Mm -hmm. uh, but really it was just a cover to sell pachin. So like he would pop up and the the wagon said would say fresh wares and fruit and right. you know and to open up and then everybody walking up was bringing jugs you know yeah. and you're just putting putting <laughs> illegal spirits into it. So you look at the back of the wagon yeah. and it's like this the floor to the top just a big stack of fruit yeah. but it's all just stapled to a door. Yeah. And, and you open up the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. 
All right. More and more, there's no. Okay, so here's what I will say. Yeah. Once you've tasted it, yeah. you start to smell more of what you taste in the nose. So it only takes a couple of sips for the majority of the funk to subdue slightly, and you start to find more of the fruit sweet in the nose as well as the taste. Yeah, a bit. This is definitely friendlier, nicer on the taste. But again, it's not like, you know, what am I going to choose from amongst no, no, you're a not, giant retail store? This or doesn't World become Whiskey. a default, but it is kind of an no, interesting historical novelty. Yeah, it's a good reference point. It's a tasty novelty. It's a good reference point, especially if you're trying to figure out uh, the effects of the spirit versus the barrel. Yeah. This, oh, shit. Now, one of my favorite historical, not uh, just myths, sort of mythologies, mm -hmm. is that in Irish history, the Irish wake partially came from the worry that maybe this person wasn't actually dead. <laughs> and so if you gave them a wake that lasted long enough, they would have a time to wake up yeah. <laughs> before you buried them. Yeah, yeah. Because they might just be, have had so much to drink that they seemed dead. Seems like they could have just got like a mirror. <laughs> fog and mirror. No, there are some sicknesses that mirrored the symptoms of death, you know, and anyway, it's a myth. It's mythology, but it's, I think it's really funny. We it's like, let's party and drink until this guy wakes up or doesn't. Since we're talking <laughs> about Irish here, AD on beer. In uh, enjoying is the name of his subreddit post. It's not good when the bottle is half empty and oxidized. It's metallic tasting and missing the nuance of the stout barrel. Yeah. He's talking about the Jameson Caskmates Stout Edition. Yeah, so... But he tells the bartender. As a result, I asked the bartender for a neat pour from the closed bottle behind the bottle out front. And the bartender stepped up. With the pour spout on it, because apparently he left the pour spout on it and it did all that stuff. Uh, without question, he poured as requested, and I'm happy. Thanks, Jake at the Ramp. Cheers. Jake at the Ramp is a, a perfect example of why we love our good bartenders. Right? The guys who will go out of their way to make shit happen for when you show up at the bar or to fix things that have gone incorrectly. And I've had a couple of bartenders like this recently that I just thought, you are a credit, you are a credit to your, to your whole category. Your species, bartender. <laughs> You're a credit to your species. So we got the Kilo Sports here? Yeah, it's a long story. Okay, buckle up. Good thing I suited up. Yeah, you suited up for this. <laughs> <laughs> Why my wife Jessica Coates had an accident at work. She slipped on some oil that was on the floor, and her hand went into the fryer. Oh! They're having to take the having to take the first layer of dermis off. What? Yeah, what? it's a thing, and they won't know to the full extent of the damage till four days because oil burns tend to burn for days and cause the oil sinks in the skin, and we have to have surgery soon. She is in the, she's the strongest, most amazing woman I've ever known. I added a couple of pictures. They are not super bad. No, we're not going to. No, no, we're not looking at the pictures. So she loves you guys as much as I do. So I think this would be super special. She is truly one of the most magnificent bastards. I All know. right. So Jessica, Jessica Coates. Holy crap. To, yes. Sorry. To speedy recovery. <laughs> yes. And vengeance on the bastard who had oil on the floor. Yeah. Let's find that guy. <laughs> Cheers to you. So, what's your end take on... So, Pachin, by the way, was outlawed for centuries. Quickly. I finally found the instance where you definitely want to pour yourself some Pachin. Mm-hmm. Toasting vengeance. Oh, yeah? Okay. <laughs> it's the Pachin? It's the spirit of vengeance The right spirit here. of vengeance. <laughs> well, this was outlawed for centuries, and then it was only, I think, 97 or so, 96, mm -hmm. late 90s, that they made it legal again to make it. Huh. So, is it... Just people are making it at home and getting carried away with it? Well, the, there was a lot of history behind it. Like, first, the English tried to tax it out of existence, and ah. they tried to tax production, then still size, and then they basically just essentially made it illegal to make Pachin right. at all. And, yeah. Sounds like other, cate complicated. other categories of things. Here's to fighting, <laughs> stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. You steal me, you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, May you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.